The double entry system so happens to be the backbone of accounting. To ensure that the double entry process is accurate, a bookkeeper is required to prepare what we call a trial balance. In today's session, I'll be taking you through a basic worked example that shows you how we construct the trial balance and we'll get started right now. So let's get straight into the question. Like you're able to see on your screen, that's the question we're going to do. This is Nana Ports Limited, and we are mandated to prepare a trial balance. We've been given that information you're seeing. It is just a list of ledger accounts, like the narration says, that the following balances are extracted from the books of, of Nana Enterprises as at 30th November 2020. So we'll get straight away with the solution to this question. So we have the motor vehicle right there. So uh, motor vehicle, the balance that was extracted from the motor vehicle account is $25,700. The unit we're using there is dollars. Motor vehicle is a fixed asset and all assets have debit balances. So we shall go ahead and write the balance in the, on the debit side of the trial balance. In this case, it's going to be 25, 25,700 like that. Then we have cash. Cash is 9,000. The value for cash is 9,000. So we are going to go ahead and write the balance for cash as 9,000 on the debit side. We are writing it as 9,000 on the debit side because cash is an asset and all asset accounts have debit balances. Then we have sales. The value for sales is 65,620. That is going to be put on the credit side. That is 65,620. Sales have a credit balance so we are putting the 65,620 dollars on the credit side of the trial balance then we have what we call discount received now a discount received is an indirect income it being an indirect income means that it will have a credit balance so we shall go ahead and put that figure of 2,910 on the credit side of the discount received account then moving on, we have what we call the trade payables. Now, trade payables are more like the other name for trade payables is creditors. Creditors are people who give us stuff or they we go ahead and get items from them and we are expected to pay them back later. So these are trade payables. They are creditors and creditors have a credit balance. This is the liability to the business. Now we have courage inwards. Courage inwards is more like transport that is spent on transporting the purchases or when you are buying stock that you're going to resell. The money you use for transport to bring that stock into your business is what we are calling courage inwards. Courage inwards is considered a direct expense or a direct cost. And because of its expense nature, it will be a debit balance. All expense accounts are debit balances, so this is a debit balance. Then we have purchases. Purchases are when you bring things that you're meant to resell. That is when you buy stuff that you meant to resell, you've made purchases. Now what purchases does is that it increases the amount of stock in the business and we know that increases in stock are debited. Stock being an asset, assets have debit balances. It means purchases will also have debit balances. So the value of purchases is posted on the debit side. Then we have returns outwards. Returns outwards is the same as sales returns. Returns outwards means that you bought goods from your suppliers and you're returning them because of one reason or another. Now, let's take note that returns outwards is a reverse of purchases. When you purchase stuff, it come, you're increasing the amount of stock in the business. When you're making returns outwards, you're returning these goods back to your suppliers. It means that the amount of stock in your business is going to reduce. And in other words, returns outwards reverses purchases. So if purchases have a debit balance, it means returns outwards will have the reverse also. It will have a credit balance. So the figure for returns outwards is posted on the credit side. Then we have stock as at first December 2019. Now, if this is first December 2019, remember we are preparing this 
Um, this is as at 30th November 2020. So if we are looking at 30th November 2020, it means that uh, stock as at 1st December 2019 is the opening stock. The opening stock, stock is an asset and assets always have a debit balance. So we shall put stock right there as a debit balance. Then we have capital. Capital is a credit balance. So we put that in the credit side. And then finally, we have the loan. The loan is a long-term liability and all liability accounts have a credit balance. So we'll go ahead and put the loan amount on the credit side. So basically, that's how our trial balance looks like. We'll go ahead and add up both sides, the debit side and the credit side. And if the double entry system was accurate, the debits should be equal to the credits as revealed in the totals down here. So if you go ahead and add them up, this is what we get. Before I bring this session to a close, there are a few comments that I would like to make on some variances of the accounts. Here we dealt with discount received and we say that discount received is an indirect, ex indirect income. That is, you've gone to buy stuff from your suppliers and you pay less than you should. They give you a discount. That is an indirect income and because it's indirect income, it is a credit balance. However, what about if it is discount allowed? Discount allowed is the reverse of this. When you decide to receive less money than you should because you're giving your customers a discount to induce prompt payment, that is considered an expense and all expense accounts are debit balances. So meaning that if this is a disc, if discount received is a credit balance, it means discount allowed will be a debit balance. Trade payables, we say it are like the other name for trade payables is the creditors. The creditors are a liability to the business and they definitely have a credit balance. Now, if it is instead trade receivables, trade receivables are debtors to the business. These are assets to the business and trade receivables have a debit balance. Let's get to courage inwards. We say it here, courage inwards. This is more like transport on purchases or goods that are coming into the business. And this is considered a, an expense, but it's more of a direct cost of production and it is debited. Carriage outwards is also an expense. In other words, it is transport that is incurred by the business to ensure that these goods reach the customers. It is also considered a debit balance. Then I'll talk about returns outwards also. Returns outwards, we say returns outwards is the reverse of purchases. In other words, you're, try, you're returning goods to your suppliers. And because you're returning goods to your suppliers, if purchases is a debit balance, the reverse of purchases, which is returns outwards, or call it purchase returns, will ultimately be a credit balance. So if uh, a, devi a, a deviation from this, if we are talking about returns inwards, returns inwards are what we call sales returns. In other words, this time it is customers that are trying to bring back goods to your business. They are returning goods that they had earlier purchased on credit. So returns inwards is a reverse of sales. It reverses sales. So meaning if sales have a credit balance, returns inwards will have a debit balance. Of course, in a nutshell, when we are dealing with tri balances, don't forget that all asset accounts have debit balances, all equity accounts have credit balances, all liability accounts have credit balances, all income accounts have credit balances, and all expense accounts have debit balances. In our upcoming session, we are going to do a more detailed worked example. In this more detailed worked example, I will be doing the double entry of a series of transactions. By doing the double entry of this series of transactions means that I'm going to post the transactions to the relevant ledger accounts. After posting to the relevant ledger accounts, we shall balance all these accounts together and thereafter we will extract the balances from these accounts to create the tri balance. This is what we shall be doing in our upcoming session. Like this video if you like it, be sure to subscribe. If you've not yet subscribed, check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Arnold Rangakuramia. 
and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care.